Specifically, I want to touch on CIP. Yes. We have a we have a number of people being added to our citizenship, mm-hmm. or, or or yeah yeah the citizens of Antigua via citizen by investment program. Yes. What rights do they have in this entire electoral process? The law as it stands, not only law but the Constitution of Antigua and Barbuda, provides that any person who is a Commonwealth citizen and who is not a national of Antigua and Barbuda is required to live here lawfully for seven years. I am a Commonwealth citizen, but I am also a national of Antigua and Barbuda. So every national of Antigua and Barbuda, Antigua Barbuda passport, is entitled to be registered as an elector. If By none. They have a right to show that they are national Antigua and Barbuda, apply for Antigua and Barbuda passport. And once the passport people are satisfied that they meet the requirement of the Constitution, they have a right to get them a passport. So and if they have a passport, mm-hmm. they have a right to register as an elector. So it doesn't matter once you carry an Antiguan passport to our election office. They are not to be questioning as to whether you are a CIP person or who. You are an Antigua, you are an Antigua. There is no two-tier system of citizenship as I know it. People would like it to be so and sometimes the politicians themselves may make people believe that there is some two-tier. But we have, to, we have to decide what we want. There is a part mm. in um, the process mm-hmm. where you have claims and objections. Mm-hmm. Now, in the claims and objections, mm-hmm. you would have people who would say, I don't know that person to live right. in the constituency. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point you're bringing. Yes, right. that's a very good point. That's so, the kind of argument that I want you to advance. Okay, so. <laughs> and that's so, the argument so, that so, you so, are advancing. So and that's why I answered you. Give that's me, the argument to be advanced. Because we don't know who these CIP right, people are. Right. How can then I say. That's where my people might object. Yes. And fairly so, because they may not have. You see. They must have some place of abode or some place where they live in Antigua and Barbuda. If you're an Antiguan and Barbudan, you should live in a constituency for at least six months. So it doesn't matter whether you're CIP or you con- you, you're an Antiguan and live, live in New York or what have you. Well, different. If you're a person who don't live in New York, who live in New York or live overseas or a CIP person who live over there, they have to come and live in some constituency for at least a month. They changed the law before it was one month for everybody. Yes. But the UPP changed the law to say that once you live overseas, you can live in a constituency, stay in a country for one month. Mm. So, if a person who is a CIP person say that they live down in Dickinson Bay for one month, maybe Sandals for that matter. And they go, nobody know them, but um, they go to register. The clerk at the registration or the registration officer and the scrutiny is going to uh, go certify that you say you live in Sandals, where is some evidence that you live in Sandals? And the person may not have any evidence maybe a electric electricity bill or something like that to uh, whatever identify them to um that 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 residency in that particularly defined area in the constituency right. the next step would be to issue to that person uh, um well the registration officer no they might decide that they're going to do what I call a residency verification test. And to do that, he must carry those two scrutineers with him. That's the procedure. He's supposed to do that. And they must go where he say he live and make inquiries as to uh, whether he live what he said. It doesn't matter if he's an Antiguan, non-Antiguan. You don't live there, you can't register there. And if he's satisfied that the person, even though they have an Antiguan passport, 
don't live in that constituency, he may object to that person being registered. I think that's what you're talking yes. about. Yes. 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 You could object to that person, you know, but that person also have another bite of the cherry to appeal to the registration officer if you give him you give him a form we call a form of disallowance, meaning they disallow that person. Once that is done, the person then make an appeal back to that registration officer, who is the first trial in that process and that registration officer must sit down just like a judge or magistrate would do and listen and take notes and he may come to his same conclusion at the end of the day then he has a right to appeal yes. to the electoral commission for a review of that decision mm -hmm. and that decision we will have to sit as a commission just the same way because we become the appellate jurisdiction here in this process yes. and we will sit and we we'll listen if we believe what the, if if he can't satisfy us we look at the evidence and so forth and we are not satisfied that he lives in that constituency we will also we can also disallow that person to be registered and he then that's where he will then appeal to the high court where a judge of the court will make a decision whether we are wrong or we are right. But he has the same right that you would... And I, what I'm telling you here is really in relation to any Antiguan. 